shirt And this is my offering In every moment I withhold nothing I'm learning to trust you Even when I can't see it And even in suffering I have to believe if you say it's wrong, then I'll say no If you say release, I'm letting go If you're in it with me, I'll be in And when you say to jump, I'm diving in If you say be still, then I will wait If you say to trust, I will obey I don't want to follow my own way I'm done chasing feelings, spirit my ways I'm trading in my thoughts I lay down everything cause you're all that I want land it on my knees this is the cup you have for me and even when it don't make sense I'm gonna let your spirit leave I'm gonna let your Chasing feelings, spirit, leave me. Hey guys, we hope you have a great summer and we'll see you next year. Hey, and to our seniors, we're going to miss you. We'll be praying for you and know that we love you very much. To all my students, I say I'm sorry for all the time and practice we put in on songs and pieces we never got to perform and all the new equipment we never got to use. But next year, we'll give it another go, okay? And to my seniors, I say goodbye and I'll see you later. I'm so proud of you for finishing a difficult school year with perseverance, um, with hard work, and I hope you have a great summer.
As we reflect upon a most unusual year and look toward an uncertain future, let us resolve to daily commit our ways to the Sovereign Lord, trusting Him to accomplish His good purposes in each of our lives. Have a great summer. Happy summer, students. I hope that you have learned a lot this year. I know you've taught me a lot, and I pray that as we move forward, that you would always have confidence in Jesus as your Savior. For the Middle School Knowledge Bowl, the 10th grade English students, and the dual enrollment, thank you for a great year. It was a real gift to me to work with you guys. Thank you for all your hard work. You are his. You belong to him. The world is kind of kooky right now, but don't worry. God's got you. Ninth graders coming up. Can't wait to work with you. God bless you guys. Hey guys, it's Mr. Stecker. Just wanted to let you know you've done an awesome job with uh, transitioning to digital learning. I know it's been tough on you and tough on your family. It's been kind of a big switch for this end of the year, but uh, you all really hit the ground running. I'm super proud of you, and uh, you've earned a good summer break, so goodbye and have a great summer break. I'll see you in the fall. Bye. Yo, my name is Preston Myers. I'm a junior. I mean, I hope you know. Anyway, when I was asked to do this little message type thing, I really had no clue what I was going to do. I love the opportunity. I, mean, I know I'm called to be pastor i know god has a calling on my life so this and i've been praying for opportunity for a, a long time and so i just knew that this was the opportunity they came and i'm blessed with and so when um mr matheson and mr dayton asked me to kind of give a little short message um i wasn't given a certain topic and so i wasn't sure what i was going to talk about but you know god's good god's faithful and a little bit of worry came into me, but, you know, God overcomes, and I'm going to talk about that um, today. But the way I got this message is just through actually somebody else um, started a devotion with me, and I'm doing a devotion every day with this other with some other people. And I came across these chapters in Job, and uh, it really spoke to me. The Lord, I just knew the Spirit was pressing it on me to talk about this, and yeah. So in this whole pandemic, a lot of us are worrying, a lot of us are anxious. I know that it was a lot harder a month ago, a lot harder three weeks ago, and we're starting to get a little bit more hope. Rapid City's opening up, like 38 of the, our 50 states are have opened up, not fully, but have stopped restrictions, and the country's starting to open up. I know Trump's talking about you know, opening up everything, and so we're starting to get a little bit more hope, but we still know that there's still a problem. The pandemic isn't just leaving. We know that we're still going to have to struggle a little bit, and social distancing restrictions are still going to be set in place. Um, but I, we do know that it's going to be okay, and I hope that you believe that. You can say that, but I just hope in your heart and in your, in your brain that you just believe that fully and trust God knowing that He will overcome. Um, so I came across this chapter in Job, this is Job chapter 5, and this is after Job had everything basically taken away from him, and he didn't he didn't deserve it, right? He, he didn't deserve to have everything taken away, but he did. And he talks about worshiping God in the low and in the high, and his wife tells him, like, why are you still worshiping God? And asking him why he still worships God, even though God's taken everything away from him. And Job continues to tell her, why would I only worship God when I have things? Why would I only worship God when he's good to me? That's, that's not fair. That's not the right end of the deal. He says, I will worship God when I have nothing. I will worship God in the lowest of the low. And in the highest of the high, I will worship God with this same energy because He is never changing. My circumstances don't define my relationship with God. But this is Eliphaz. Um, I hope I pronounced that right. His friend talking to him. And I know he kind of has a bad taste. And a lot of his friends talk about karma. And don't give him the ba best spiel, but... Um, in Job 5, verses 18 and through the rest of the chapter, um, that's where I'm going to be reading from. Eliphaz is talking to Job, and he's reminding him of who God is and what God should, God's promises. And so starting from verse 20, For he wounds, but he also binds up. He injures, but his hands also heal. From six calamities he will rescue you, and seven no harm will touch you. In famine he will deliver you from death. And in battle from the stroke of the sword, you will be protected from the lash of the tongue. 
and need not fear when destruction comes. You will laugh at destruction and famine. You need not fear the wild animals, for you will have a covenant with the stones of the field, and the wild animals will be at peace with you. You will know that your tent is secure, and you will take stock of your property and find nothing missing. You will know that your children will be many, and your descendants will be like the grass of the earth. You will come to the grave in full vigor, like sheaves gathered in season. We have we have examined this, and it is true. So hear it and apply to yourself. Apply it to yourself. So I was Eliphaz talking to Job, and he's just telling him, "Listen, Job. Even though all this stuff is happening to you, you have that promise with God. Like He will overcome." I know in one verse twenty it says, "In famine He will deliver you from death, and in battle from the stroke of the sword." So if we focus on that, in famine He will deliver you from death. A lot of people at the beginning of this whole quarantine were struggling, you know, the whole toilet paper pandemic and stuff like that. And people are struggling to get food and everything. But listen, in famine, he will deliver you from death. So in famine, like you do not have to worry because God will supply. And it's the same thing. I was talking with my pastor about it um, at the beginning of this whole quarantine. It's the same thing as with the Israelites um, with the manna. God gave them this certain amount. And he said, here, this is your manna. Take it and eat it. And he gave them enough to where they wouldn't be, like, they wouldn't starve, right? And he gave them enough to where they would be filled. And he said, do not take more than you need. And I think that's a lot of what, what a lot of people started doing with the whole toilet paper thing and with a lot of food. People just started taking way too much. And people just started worrying. And worry is not of God. When should we worry? We should only worry when Jesus worries. And Jesus don't worry. So we should never worry, right? I say that, and I worry. I'm just... I worry just as much as the next person, so I'm just saying I need to listen to my own advice, but it's exactly what God says. And when they had that manna, they started to take more than what they needed, and it just it got depleted, basically, and it um, started to rot, started to go bad, but they didn't trust God. And what we see in here, in famine, he will deliver you from death. You just got to trust. I mean, verse 18 says, for he wounds, but he also binds up. He injures, but his hands also heal. This pandemic, God knew it was going to happen. God let it happen, right? But he also will heal and he will bind it up, right? Blessed is the one who God corrects. Do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. This could be a test for all Christians. We just got to trust and have that full hope in who Jesus is. And we move on to Job 6. Um, Job, This is Job talking back to all of his friends. And this is Job 6 verse 11. He says, what strength do I have that I should still hope? What prospects that I should be patient? Do I have the strength of a stone? Is my flesh bronze? Do I have any power to help myself now this success has been driven from me? Listen, that's what a lot of people are questioning right now. Why should I even hope? Why should I even have patience that God is going to go through this? It's because time is relevant. Relative, sorry. Right? God created time. He's above time. And this is all in His time. He holds time in His hand. He holds this earth in His hand. All of this is going to pass. Right? And even if it doesn't pass right now, so many people are dying. Hundreds of thousands of people are dying around the world. Right, Even in this life, it, it may not pass. It may not go away. Right, Some of these people aren't going to have a second chance. They're going to die from COVID. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a tough problem, and we have to take the certain restrictions to get past it. It's exactly, exactly what Jesus said in Mark 14, verse 36, when he's in uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. And he says, Lord, if you can take this cup from me, Please do it, but let thy will be done. This We have to understand that this problem, we're asking God, we're begging God that he gives wisdom to the to the officials and he just gives wisdom to the people in leadership and he gives wisdom to the people to take the restrictions and the guidelines seriously. But let thy will be done. It's exactly what Jesus says. Like Even if it's not taken away, we have to let God's will be done and just live by it. we got to live in the present. we got to know that with everything that happens, we have to take that opportunity to just worship and have that discipline to worship all the time, have that discipline to be praying, have the discipline to be preaching the gospel through our words, through our actions, through our attitude, all the time. And God is good all the time. And all the time, God's good. Like, there ain't no way around it. Um, I just hope that throughout this pandemic and throughout the rest of this, if it lasts through summer, if it lasts through the next year, if it lasts for the next six years, or if it lasts for the next week, that you have that same trust and you have that same hope that God will overcome this and that we will overcome this through God, right? In Philippians 4.13, we talk about the strength, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's a lot about Christ strengthening 
us. That's how people kind of think of it. There's Christ is strengthening us. No, like our strength is zero. God gave us all that strength, right? Every part of that strength to get through this is His because all the glory must go back to Him. Christ who strengthens me. It's not Christ putting a little bit more strength on my strength because I have no strength to even overcome any of this, right? If if I, I feel so bad for the people who are not Christians, who do not have this hope in God, who do not have this relationship with Jesus, I, I don't even understand how they could be, how they could be even what they're thinking right now. Like, how, what kind of hope do they have? Like, they have to be thinking, oh, I need to take all these, all these uh, certain steps to survive, right? But we know that if all our food was taken away, if everything was taken away from us, that we still have God. That's exactly what happened to Job. Everything was taken from him. His, his animals were taken from him. His family. Uh, everything was taken away from him. And he trusted God, knowing that God would overcome. We have to have that same hope. I'm just encouraging you today, encouraging you today and I'm just hoping that you're trusting God um, and just knowing that he will get through this. And I pray, Mark 14, over you. Let thy will be done understand that God is above all of this and understand that God is more than just a prayer God is more than just a devotion God is more than just someone you just talk to once a day he wants to be there all the time and God wants you to trust him all the time and we should only worry when Jesus worries when does Jesus worry never I hope this encouraged you today I hope you know that through Christ we will get through this and I hope you know that Jesus is good all the time. And all the time, Jesus is good. I love you guys. Hope you stay safe. And I hope you take the restrictions and social distancing seriously. But I pray that you do it by God's will. Awesome. Well, we did it. We made it through a whole quarter of social distancing. We've made it to the other side. And now, seniors, as you move on, remember that we love you. and You'll always have a place here. And everyone else, um, hopefully see you in the fall where we'll be back to full strength. Love you guys. Take care. Have a great summer. It has been my very great pleasure to work with you all, and I hope you spend the summer learning something awesome. Hey, everyone. I've really missed seeing you guys come into my classroom. Uh, you guys have been so perseverant and worked so hard. I'm so proud of you. Have a wonderful summer. Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Reed here. Sorry we didn't get to finish out the year in a traditional format, but it's very exciting that everybody's finishing strong and staying the course. I'm wishing you all a happy summer and hope to see you all in the fall. To all our students and families here at Rapid City Christian, thank you for being a part of this year and Mr. Stecker and I's journey as we have taken on the role of co-principals. It's been very quiet without you around here. We miss you a lot. I just want to leave you with my, one thought for the summer. Uh, my prayer for you is that you grow in grace and in knowledge of Christ and that your relationship with him deepens. I look forward to seeing you guys in the fall. Have a wonderful summer.
my soul Now the freedom is all that I know Break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter. I was an orphan. You called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were not here. Your love is the heaven I breathe. You had a future. I was a time has come for me to say goodbye. I will miss you all. God's blessings. Hey students, uh, sure missed having you around here. It's been way too quiet. Hope you have a great summer. Missed seeing you all the last few weeks and I look forward to seeing you again in the fall. Have a great summer. Hey RCC, I'll leave you with the words from the great blessing from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with the greatest of favor and give you his peace. Have a great summer. Hey you guys, have a great summer. Adios estudiantes, espero que tengan un buen verano. Hasta luego. Hello from Thank you for holding down the fort in your homes as you've been such great troopers, as you've been gaining ground in education, navigating the new models, being diligent to persevere, and you've just done an incredible job. Thank you for that. I'm not going to say goodbye. I'm going to say I'm looking forward to when we can hear Reveille, and that means we can all get back together again this fall. See you then. Hey guys, it's Skylar here, and I'm just going to answer a few questions and just share a little bit about my testimony. Hello, I'm Nathan Schlager, your student body president, and I am here to share you guys my testimony. So the first question is, explain the struggles in your life that cause you to recognize your need for a savior. The thing that I realized in my life that I need a savior was how I was acting. I was possessed of the worldly things. I wanted to be the most popular kid. I wanted to be the best at my sports. I wanted to have the best things, the worldly things. And that's, it never brought me true joy. It never brought me true happiness. I was pursuing these things that never really brought me to where I wanted to be or where I wanted to go. But then I realized I needed a savior and God has changed my life since. He re I realized that there's true joy in this world. There's true things I need in this world, not earthly things, but him. He's the only thing I truly need in this world to have true freedom and true joy to expand myself and to become who I actually am in Christ. I wanted to go ahead and explain a little bit about how I even got into Rapid City Christian throughout high school and how much of an awesome experience that was. And so um, the struggles in that part was that I 
went to Hermosa kindergarten through eighth grade and there's not a high school in Hermosa so you have to choose some place to go and I remember my volleyball coach asking me where are you gonna go to high school and I said you know I would really like my dream would be to go to Rapid City Christian but I'll probably end up going to Hill City or something like that and she said oh well I know someone who works there so you know let me just see and so just from her making a phone call to connecting me to RCC and me touring and um, getting to see the place and experience it there was a whole bunch of people that had their hand in that and it's honestly such an amazing story I wish I had like all the time in the world to tell it but there's so many people that played a part in me being at Rapid City Christian and that invested in me and being at Rapid City Christian gave me such an opportunity to recognize how much I needed Jesus more. So the second question is, how did Jesus come into your life and begin to change you? I accepted Christ at a young age, but I didn't really fully accept him. I was kind of doing it because it was a cool thing and all my friends were doing it and I, well, I wanted this thing that people were saying that's amazing, so I kind of accepted him. But I truly accepted in my sophomore year of high school where I really realized how I've been acting and how I truly need a father that takes care of me, the God of the universe. I really needed him, and he has changed my life f into an amazing way. He has made me a new person, a person that actually wants it and cares about people, a person that that has true joy and happiness because I have the love of my father in my life. So I was saved the summer of my eighth grade year at my uncle's church in Alabama. And he began to change me by helping me recognize that I am not perfect. And that's really hard for me because I tend to be a perfectionist about myself and just recognizing that I don't have to be perfect and that God is my friend and he's my helper and that he's wants to guide me and he wants to cha change and transform my heart. That was um, probably the biggest way. And the third question is, what is the biggest way that Christ has transformed you? And that would be my answer of just helping me recognize that I don't have to be perfect. Probably my service. I want to serve. I want to show the world God. That's why he has changed me the most is my service. I want to be out there showing God's word. I want to be someone that people look at and be like, wow, I can see Christ in him. And that is the most amazing thing I want in my life is the people to see that in my life and change and find Christ through that. It's not me that's doing it, it's Christ doing it through me. And that's what I really want in my life. The fourth question is, if you could say only one thing to a non-Christian, what would it be? Ooh, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, probably that... I'm here for you. Um, if you have any questions, God loves you. You're you're made the way you are. We're all all those kind of things. Uh, I would just try to be there and hug them and just not be so aggressive to them and just show them love that Christ has, and just not probably not even bring up Christ until a while before we become really good friends or something. But just show them that I'm here for them and that there's more to this life than what they're living. And I would say to not wait and to just do it. <laughs> but it's honestly the best decision that you will ever make. And it gives you so much hope. And you recognize so many other areas of your life that God can impact. And if you allow him to be a part of them. And before you wouldn't have even realized that God would want to be a part of it. But he wants to be a part of every single aspect of your life. And the fifth question is, what is one piece of advice you would give to a Christian who wants to grow? Uh, probably you're you're not alone. Get you're not alone. You have Christ in you, and you have all. Hopefully, these friends at RCC there for you, or hopefully you then you'll have me if I'm talking to them. That you're not alone in this, and we all are struggling through stuff in our life, and we're all tempted, and we're all we're all pushing through our own boundaries. But probably you're just yeah, you're not alone, and Christ is with you too. Uh, you that's the biggest thing is you have Christ and these godly friends hopefully in your life. And I would say to just surround yourself by people that want to help you grow and that want to build you up in your faith and not try to stir you away or cause any more distraction in your life. Because once you become a Christian, you want to just learn more and more about Jesus and and him coming into your life. And so just to surround yourself with those kind of people 
that will help you grow is probably the best thing and the best environment for you. And honestly, Rapid City Christian, like I'm not, I'm not trying to be like, oh, sponsor Rapid City Christian. Like this is just my testimony that surrounding myself with that kind of community and surrounding myself with those people that want to build me up in my faith is, it's the best environment you can be in. And so with that, I just want to let you guys know that I'm praying for you and I'm thinking about you guys and I miss all of you guys. And um, thank you to our teachers for helping us finish out the year strong and just for always um, supporting us in our education. And not only in our education, but us as people and wanting to help us grow spiritually as well. And thank you for all my classmates and uh, I just thank you for this whole school and that I've gotten to spend like the last four years with all of you guys and you guys are honestly just know you're treasured and you're loved and I hope you all are doing well and I hope you guys have a great day. I pray that God will swell your hearts, inflame your spirits, and blow your minds with the plans he has for you this summer. Greetings to you Rapid City Christian students and staff and family. It's good to be here this morning and to uh, just share with you a little bit of maybe what our future plans are as we are taking a little different journey now in our uh, taking a little different fork in the road in this journey of life that we're on. And today we're uh, rejoicing in what the Lord has allowed us to do in our decision making in this past year to uh, take that fork in the road and spend more time with family and with our children, with our grandchildren, and maybe a little different way in serving the Lord. We've been here at Rapid City Christian, I've been here anyway, for the past 23 years, and it has gone by so quickly. I can't believe it's uh, gone by that fast, but it's been an enjoyable journey, and I'm really going to miss seeing these students each and every day like I have for the past 23 years. I am leaning on a verse that I've always claimed, and that was in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that... Uh, I need to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding, but acknowledge him in all my ways and he'll direct my paths. Thank you, Lord, that you have done exactly that. And so I think at this point in time, I'm going to let my wife share a little bit about uh, what's on her heart. In Philippians um, and Colossians and in Thessalonians, I love the way Paul always opens up those letters. And he says something like this, I thank my God every time I remember you, always with joy, I pray. And that will really be um, at my heart that I will um, remember you um, and be thankful for all of you that I've yeah had the opportunity to teach here at Rapid City Christian. Um, I cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm happy and sad. So sorry about this. But um, I just want to tell you that um, we're just pressing on toward what we feel like God is calling us to do, as it says in Philippians. And, um, and not only for family, but also we have many friends that have um, done missions all of their lives, and we would like to be a part of some of their ministries and maybe um, go um, to Mexico and um, some other places and to serve the Lord in that way. So we're really excited about what he has for us, and um, but we aren't going to forget you. Um, this, I only have been here seven years, I think, and, um, and even that has been such a great joy and um, uh, just fond memories of all of you, the seniors, the juniors, sophomores, freshmen, and my seventh graders. Um, it has been great to be a part of your day every day. And um, it was sad to have it cut short this year, but still thankful for every day that we had. I just want to remind you to give all of your teachers meat. Don't give them just shortcuts. Give them meat in everything that you do. And then just to remember that when God begins a work in you, that he is faithful to complete it. And he's all about finishing that work. And it's a lifelong process. And it's the best life that you could ever have. Um, my prayer for you will be that your eyes will be open to the truth more and more as you grow in your faith and as you walk this walk with him. 
And we want to let you know and be assured that we really do love each and every one of you and that we will miss you very, very much. And so just like my wife said, just press on and keep giving your best to the Lord and he will bless you in it. Thank you for allowing us to just share a little bit of what's been on our hearts here today.